If you've clicked on this video, I'm guessing that you're currently in a project trying to cast to something and you can't figure out what the heck to plug into this object pin, or you're just tired of this problem in general and want a better understanding of casting. Well, in either case, I suggest you sit back, take a break from your project, because I'm going to explain casting as thoroughly as I can in this video, and hopefully going forward you'll be able to use it with ease. So let's answer the question we're all here for. What the heck is this object pin? Why is it there? And how do I figure out what to plug into it? Well, before I can answer that question, there is another topic you have to have a basic understanding of, and that topic is inheritance, but don't worry, I'm going to keep this simple. So whenever you go to your content browser, right click and choose new blueprint class, as I'm sure you have many times before, I want you to notice that at the top of this window, it says pick parent class. So anytime that you create an actor or a pawn or a character, whatever it is, you're creating a child of that class. Okay, so what I've done real quick is I've created this BP underscore cube guy. You can see right here, it's parent class is actor. You can also see that in the class settings, parent class actor. Okay, so that means that by default, this cube guy has all the stuff that an actor has. You see all these variables here. And if you don't see these, you can go here and tick show inherited variables. But not only that, we can add our own stuff to it to give it custom functionality. Now, the important thing to note here is that while a cube guy is an actor, an actor is not a cube guy. If that sounds confusing, let me make sense of it real quick. Notice that I've added this first name variable, right? And these components, as I previously mentioned, obviously actor doesn't contain any of those things. If, if I go and I right click, create a new blueprint class and then create an actor again, it's not going to have any of that, which makes sense. So the, the point here to take away is that a cube guy is an actor, but an actor is not a cube guy. Now, why is this important and why does this help you understand casting? Well, I'm sure you've heard that this object pin takes in a generic type and converts it to a specific reference to an object in the world. When people say a generic type, really what this object pin takes in is a parent class of some sort. So. I've added two of these cube guys to the world and I've exposed that first name variable. I've named the first one Bob and I've named the second one Sally. And we're in our first person player character right now and we want to get the name of whichever one we walk up to. We want to walk up to it and basically say, hey, what's your first name? Now, when I was first starting out, I remember wondering, why do I even need this object reference to begin with? I mean, I, I, it, it knows that I want a cube guy right here. It knows that I'm looking for first name. What do I need this object reference for? I mean, that seems kind of pointless when I'm trying to get an object reference to begin with. Well, pretend that you didn't need this, right? And I just plug this into begin play or something right now. What would this return? We have two cube guys in the world and they both have a different first name. So what, what could this possibly return? It, it, it can't return anything. We need to specifically reference one of the cube guys in the world. Now, the way that I'm going to do that in this video is I'm just going to go and add a box collision to my first person character. All right, I'm going to drag it forward a little bit. And then in the event graph with it selected, I'm going to call its on component begin overlap event. Okay, and I'm going to plug this in here. So when the box collides with something, we are going to try and get the first name from our cube guy. Now, Notice that this begin overlap event outputs an actor. We can plug this into here, compile, and this will work. That says Bob, and that says Sally. And I now, I want to explain this. I want to go back to when we were talking about inheritance. What we're getting out of here, if I hover over this, you can see other actor, actor, object, reference. If I try to drag off this and type in first name, you're going to see it doesn't have any of that. That's kind of the whole point of casting. This is just a generic actor. And during runtime, when I collide with one of these two guys, this actor value gets set to a BP base cube guy. From there, we can plug into the uh, cast to BP base cube guy and it's it sees right away. OK, this does inherit from actor. Is it a cube guy? If it's not, this cast is going to fail. So let's go and let's create a new blueprint. And let's just call this not a cube guy. And we'll go ahead and we'll add in a cone. Drag our cone in. Drag it up. So this is also an actor, but it's not a cube guy. 
So if I walk into this, we get Bob, Sally, and obviously nothing from the cone to really demonstrate this. Let's go back to our first person character. And off of the cast failed, I'm going to print string. Cast failed. Compile. We got Bob, we got Sally, and then cast failed. Okay, so what's happening here is obviously this on begin overlap node can't know ahead of time of all the different children classes of actor that exist in the game. I mean, they haven't even been created yet. This comes with the engine and it, it can't know that you're going to have a cube guy and it can't have a pin for every single possible child of actor. That would just be ridiculous. So all it can really give you is a base actor, which isn't going to have any of the stuff your child has. And so you're not going to be able to get first name unless you cast. That's the whole point of casting is to take this generic object type and get a specific reference to one of its children in the world. So another thing that this on component begin overlap spits out is a primitive component object type. And this does not inherit from actor. So if I plug this in here and I compile, you're going to see this warning because right away this cast node sees, okay, BP cube guy does not inherit from primitive component. And it knows right away that this is always going to fail. If I were to take this other component and do get owner, this is kind of pointless to do, but if I get owner, you'll see this prints out an object reference. So what will happen is, is the collision will pick up the actual cube or the eyes, and then it'll get the owner actor. And then I go like this, that'll work. So if I hit play and you get Bob, you get Sally, and then you get cast failed. So to drive this home even more, I'm going to confuse you a little bit. I'm going to create a variable here, and this is going to be of type actor and we're going to make it an object reference and I'll just rename this actor object ref we're also going to create a variable and we're going to call it cube guy and we're going to make this one of type bp underscore cube guy because whenever you create a class any class that you create is also its own data type so we have this actor object reference here. And if I do set and I pull out a cube guy reference, two different data types, but remember cube guy inherits from actor. So if I plug this in, it's going to let me set this actor object reference. I still can't pull out of here and get first name. I would still have to cast to BP underscore cube guy to get that because again, an actor does not contain that variable. Now the important thing here is if I pull out actor object reference and I try to set cube guy that's not going to work because again an actor is not a cube guy but a cube guy is an actor a parent is not a child but the child is its parent and that's the important thing to take away here now one more thing you might have seen when casting so if I pull out this direct BP cube guy reference and I plug into this object pin you might think well a cube guy is a cube guy so this should work and it will work but you'll get this note here and it says cube guy is already a BP cube guy. You don't need to cast a BP underscore cube guy. Basically this pin right here is spitting this out, this exact type of data out. So there's no need to cast to it. If you have this, so like if I expose this variable, go in here, select my first person character. I can now, if I compile, I think, yeah, you'll now see I have this cube guy variable that I can set and I now have a reference to Bob. So if I go in, it's going to print out Bob. Now, although that works, like I said, this cast is unnecessary because this is of type BP underscore cube guy. So I can drag directly off of this to get first name, plug that into the print string. We can remove this cast for the time being. And without using a cast, we can just get that first name directly from this variable. So if I compile. Hit play, you're going to see the same result. It prints out Bob. Of course, doing it this way by using a generic actor class makes it dynamic. So we can walk up to any cube guy and have it print out the name of that, that cube guy. So you might be thinking now, okay, well, this is all fine and dandy, but I'm not using an on component begin overlap. And the thing I'm trying to cast to is, you know, maybe you're trying to cast from your widget blueprint or something like that, where you can't even do something like this. And all I can really say is it's going to vary how you get this object reference. But if casting is the right way to go, there's usually a decently straightforward way to get a valid object reference. And if 
you find yourself doing something overly convoluted, casting might not be the right way to handle the problem you're trying to solve. You might want to look into blueprint interfaces. Speaking of which, something to watch out for that I've seen done a lot when people are just starting out. I myself have done this too. Let's say, for example, you were trying to create some sort of interaction system. Well, first off, I wouldn't use a box overlap for that, but that's besides the point. Let's say you wanted to be able to walk up to a cube guy and have it print his first name. And then if you walk up to a door, the door will open. And if you walk up to like a collectible or a gun, it picks the gun up. You might be thinking to yourself, oh man, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cast the cube guy. And then if this cast fails, I'm going to have to cast the door. And then if that cast fails... And the answer is no, don't do that. If you find yourself nesting casts, I can guarantee you there's a better way. In the example that I just gave, that way would definitely be blueprint interfaces. I've created another video on blueprint interfaces, so there should be a card popping up right now for that if you're unfamiliar with them. But if you find yourself nesting casts, I definitely recommend you check that out or just learn about blueprint interfaces in general because they will save you so much trouble. But anyways, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video, please consider slapping a like on it. And for more content from me, consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching.